All right, guys, welcome into the Button Brenneman Show. It is the new year. Most of the playoff, uh, most of the bowl games are behind us. Of course, we had the college football playoff there. Michigan took on Alabama out at the Rose Bowl in Washington, handled business against Texas. Adam, man, we will waste no time. Just want to get your thoughts immediately on the two games. Well, first of all, Jake, how happy are you right now? A job's not finished, bro. Job's not <laughs> finished. <laughs> but yes, I'm happy. I mean, it was an dude. awesome uh, Rose Bowl's phenomenal. I had never been. It was an unbelievable experience. Icing on the cake was the win. Did, did you see my tweet? As soon as the game ended, I tweeted, Jake Blood is so happy right now. I don't know if you saw it. <laughs> I didn't see it because my phone was blowing up because, uh, you know, they decided to post a picture of me sweating, running all over, all, well, run, running up and down in a full suit on the field. So. I, yeah. I have some questions about that that we'll get to in a second. I My yeah. initial takeaways from Michigan, Alabama, one of the best football games I've seen in a while. Like if you're a true ball guy and you love hard nosed football, that's exactly yeah. what you want out of, out of the college football playoff. That's why we have the 14 playoff or they did it like that to get that kind of matchup uh, proves even more that Alabama should have been in the playoff to get that kind of game. Uh, it, it, it really is everything you can want tough, nasty and i thought i thought michigan just physically looked better than alabama they looked like a better roster they looked like uh they were more physical up front i thought again sharon moore had a great plan of using shifts and motions on offense to keep alabama off balance they were doing a ton of stuff pre-snap um which i know they've done some all, all season long but it seemed like they did a little bit more against bama to kind of keep the alabama defense uh off balance so uh, I, I thought I thought it was an awesome game. Everything you could want from a scene of the Rose Bowl, and I saw what Kirk Herbstreit said after the game, and I agree. Uh, they should play the the national championship at the Rose Bowl every single year. Yeah, yeah, man, I I agree on every everything you just said. Look, and and the funny thing is that Alabama team has been like number one, number two in recruiting rankings. Yeah. I mean, it's littered with five star talent. Uh, Michigan, though they've recruited well, it hasn't been to that level for sure. But I felt Michigan was clearly the better team for 60 minutes. Um, the 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 it's like it's like the polarization where two things are true. They made a lot of mistakes on special teams. You know, they did uncharacteristic things like fumble the flea flicker. There was there was some there was things left to be desired. And yet, I also think that shows the progression of Michigan because. Yeah. There was Michigan teams I would I had been on in Michigan teams in the past where after they had self-inflicted mistakes, they weren't able to overcome it. And Michigan yeah. started slow versus Georgia. They started slow versus TCU in the pre -off, previous playoff games, and they weren't able to overcome it. They started slow the first few minutes, yeah. and they were absolutely able to overcome it. And I just think that that's another indication of the progression of the program. Um, just a phenomenal job through and through the schemes, pre-snap, post-snap, the execution. Um, that team was more than ready to play. And I think now, Adam, like the challenge is, is like, I, I, it feels like they, like they're, they won. Like, it feels like, like this is the moment, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, doesn't it, yeah. it feels it like the, the job's done, but it's not, I think Washington's yeah. a better team than Alabama. I'm, I just think yeah. they're a better team than Alabama. Right. And the challenge is, is to like overcome that going into next week. I thought the really good thing to see from Michigan, we, we've talked on this show a bunch, Jake, about the maturity and how Michigan hasn't flinched all season and they've just been the same team. What There were times in that game where you got that feeling of like, oh no, here, here it goes again. Like they're going to lose in the, fir in the first, first game of the playoff again after the last two, two years. There were moments in that game that easily momentum could have flipped and Michigan could have ended up losing, but they never flinched. And, and when they needed it the most, with four minutes to go and probably the biggest drive and one of the biggest drives in program history, Michigan put together the drive and, and their, their best players stepped up. I, I just thought it was good to see, you know, when, when some adversity struck and there were those issues on special teams and, and things weren't always going well. And it was easy to kind of be like, Oh, Michigan's going to not be able to beat an sec team. It's going to happen again. They, they, uh, they got the job done when it mattered the most. So that was exciting to see. I, Jake, I, I do have to ask you. I don't quite understand how you could be as sweaty and as drenched as the players on the field when you were on the sidelines watching the game. So was it just pure emotion that that made you that sweaty? 
No, I mean, it's literally pure genetics, bro. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I probably have, like, a medical condition. Like, in all seriousness, <laughs> I, I, like, and actually... I'm making fun of you? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's it's totally fine. It's probably fair, you know? I mean, it is it is a ridiculous amount of sweat. But, like, frankly, like, I literally cannot help it. Like, I, you know, my recurring nightmare as a player it wasn't, like, missing a lift at 6 a.m. or, like, being late. It was having them call Y branch in the huddle on third and six and knowing the ball's coming to me and my gloves would be soaked and I know where to dry them off. And I dropped the pass. Like that was my recurring <laughs> nightmare, dude. I am. I literally Gatorade would test us. You know, when I was in the NFL, I'll just tell the story to give some context. They put a sweat uh-huh. patch on our arms when I played for the Broncos and they do this for everybody to get your sweat formula. They said I was the sweaty, every team in the NFL every year. They said I was the sweatiest guy they'd ever tested. So like, dude, I literally probably have, like a condition I was sprinting all over the field and I frankly I don't even care like I was not going to miss that angle or worry about like what I appeared to look like dude that that moment had to be captured and I'm I'm glad I did it and hey when push came to shove on air I, I threw on the jacket and no one could yeah. no, uh people were none the wiser for, anyway so it was all good for, for everyone wondering what we're talking about if you haven't seen the picture just just search on Twitter, uh, Jake Butt Sweaty or something like that. It'll come up. Jake was absolutely <laughs> drenched uh, as he was watching the final drive, Michigan's final drive. I did. I watched your. I saw some of your post game show that you yeah. did with, with Brock and the guys on Big Ten Network. You couldn't tell that you were sweaty at all. I was no. shocked. I'm like, he, the guy looks perfect. I mean, you, yeah. you're like you're just it's just unbelievable. My whole strategy was, is I was like, I needed to cool off. So, so I took my jacket off, and I was trying to cool off so I could put yeah. my jacket back on. But then, of course, that's when the picture was snapped and it, it went around. <laughs> and hey, it's all good, man. Seriously, it's it's all good. Mm-hmm. Like, you what? Why? Like, I you know, there's there. Why would I? You know, that's college sports. Like, this was what makes that's that so exact cool. thing is what makes sports great. Is it's like the emotion, the urgency, the desire, the everything about it. Like, of course, dude, I, I felt like I was in a loud stadium, and yet yeah. as that final play was being snapped, like it was dead quiet. I was like so present in that moment yeah uh, i mean what an unbelievable experience I, I i do think to give you your credit I, that that's part of what makes you a great analyst and, and that's why people love listening to you and following you is because in that moment you weren't thinking about how you're going to look on tv in 30 minutes you weren't thinking you were just thinking about football and how much you love ball and wanting to watch that final drive and i think that's why people that's what people love when they're listening to someone on tv or in the content like you love it just like a fan. Like, like you, you were not missing that final drive, no matter how sweaty you got. Did not care that your face was going to be drenched in sweat when you were on TV in 20 minutes. It was all about ball, which I think is, to your credit, why why, why you're so good at what you do. Man, I really appreciate you saying that. Like, I, I don't ever want to lose that. Like, even talking about it right now, I, like, I feel, like, this feeling in my heart and my stomach just, like, it, you know. And, and I trust me, I've felt the pain of loss many, many times, too. Yeah. Like, and it is a deep pain. And yet that has led to an appreciation for victory as every fan base has experienced both sides of that spectrum. Right. Um, And that game was just a whirlwind of an emotion. Um, Michigan just delivered those guys. Like I hear Blake Corum talk about some of the mistakes he made. He said, Hey, Roman, Roman did something earlier in the game and he looked at us and he said, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to make up for it. Uh, uh, Trevor Keegan gets in the huddle before the final two minute drive. And he looks at the guys and say, Hey, this may be our last drive ever together. I'm going to give it my all. Like, you know, these guys just – and a lot of teams say that. These guys back it up, and, and I do believe it's so genuine, and I do believe that that is going to play a factor next week, which I do want to preview, man, because this is the last time we'll talk. And I know you've spoken with Michael Penix. You went out there and did your podcast on Next Up with Adam Brenneman with the whole Washington program. Um, and, and, you know, make sure to check out Adam's social media. I'm sure you've been pushing clips and stuff. But, you know, what's, what's your perspective on this game? What's your thoughts big picture? Because I, I kind of said it earlier, I think Washington is a better team team certainly a more dangerous team offensively top to bottom than Alabama yeah I, I actually was I was out there with Washington a couple of days ago I, I went out the day before the Peach Bowl um, I'm sorry the the Sugar Bowl uh, went from the Peach Bowl to the Sugar Bowl uh, and sat down with Coach DeBoer for a for an interview uh, in the Washington AD and kind of got a sense and a vibe so I got to be around those guys the day before they, they played Texas and you could feel how loose and confident how loose and confident they were just kind of you could feel it in the team hotel there weren't wasn't much tension in the in the hotel they were the day before the game pretty loose and having some fun and practice was pretty was pretty uh you know so there were some vibes and music at practice a little a little looser than I thought they'd be uh which I thought was encouraging I, I when when it comes to first of all Washington against Texas everyone 
everyone I'm talking to and everywhere I see on social media is all about Texas right now. And, you know, everyone's talking about Texas losing and the roster moves and the players that didn't play like Arch Manning. And, but the storyline's Washington. I mean, Washington is what they've done and how quickly Kalen DeBoer has gotten them to the premier elite uh, ranks of college football. We've talked some, Jake, about that jump and how big the jump is to go from, you know, it, it's big to go from top 25 to top 10, but it's massive to go from top 10 to 12 to top four in the country. And DeBoer did it in, in such a short period of time. So I think they deserve a ton of credit. Uh, the UW offensive line against Texas didn't have a great day in the run game, but they kept Michael Penix Jr. up all night against a, an All-American level defensive line against Texas. Uh, I, I do think that Michigan is the best team we've seen in college football in a while. I mean, they are deep. They are great on both sides of the ball. They're efficient. They don't make tons of mistakes uh, other than the special teams we saw. So I, I think I think Washington – is going to have trouble against Michigan in some aspects of this game. Um, I, I I think that, you know, UW is going to have to not turn the football over because of how limited possessions can be against Michigan and the style of play and the style of offense. I, I think that's a massive key. And Washington's defense has struggled at times this year. They struggled against the run against Texas. They've struggled a lot of, uh, in a lot of moments, but they've been opportunistic and have made big plays, had the, had the two turnovers against Texas. So, Washington's going to have to take care of the football on offense and Washington's going to have to make, get a couple turnovers uh, against JJ and Michigan to, to be able to have a chance in this game. Cause I do think Michigan yeah. outmatches them. Um, you know, it went in the, the key position battles of this game. First off, you said you made a great point. Washington is the story and, and maybe it didn't feel like that because it's Texas and I get it. Texas yeah. is a massive brand, but make no mistake about it. Washington is the story. And that's what this, that's why one of the main reasons why this game is so special uh Kalen DeBoer phenomenal football coach I Unreal. mean seriously seriously what yeah. he's done is is nothing short of remarkable and Michael Penix Jr I, I mean hindsight's 2020 but maybe maybe we can uh share the he, uh, Heisman put it put it in half I mean split it in half and give him at least a real performance I, mean, I, I didn't even talk about that what a what a what a game by him wow. that ball leaves yeah. his hands yeah. and it just drops and here's here's what I wanted to say about this matchup because in a sense it reminds me of the 2021 Ohio State versus Michigan matchup when Ohio State had CJ Stroud who had that laser pointer accuracy they had mm -hmm. Garrett Wilson Chris Olave Jackson Smith and Jigba they still had a young Marvin Harrison Jr they had first round wide receiver talent all over the field um and the antidote to that for Michigan was certainly to play coverage, and yet Ohio State still got theirs. Washington will get theirs. The antidote was to create pressure to give your defense opportunities to get off the field. It won't be every time. And then the real antidote was running the football. They ran, Hassan yeah. Haskins had a career day that day. Uh, Washington versus Texas. Texas averaged about six and a half yards per carry. Michigan, I'd say they're a better running team than Texas. So, yeah. um, you know, the best the best medicine for an elite explosive offense is to keep them on the sideline by running the football, and that's what Michigan's going to have to do. Hundred percent. The 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 best the best uh, defense for Michigan is is their offense, right? <laughs> to, to, yeah. to turn the clock out and get first downs. Uh, in, in these kind of games, I always go back to one thing, especially when it's a close matchup. I, I haven't seen. Uh, I think the the line from Vegas has this being like really close, which I which I agree. Um, it, it always comes back to the small things in these big moments when there's distractions all week and, and there's so much excitement and, and hype. It, it's all about turnovers, mistakes, special teams, uh, havoc plays, all the small things that you always talk about. They're cliche. We got to win the turnover battle. We got to win first. Like all those things add up and it's going to come down to which team can do the small things the best uh, on, on Monday night. 100% man and the last thing I'd say is you know ring the football you could say that I can I could say those stats and say man Michigan should be able to run it against uh, Washington and yet I felt that to be true against TCU yeah. but I think the biggest difference is what what Sharon Moore did pre-snap to window dress they're running their same plays their base plays yeah. but the the motions and shifts I talk about this all the time it's not just motioning and shifting it's motioning and shifting with a purpose you should yeah. be able to answer the question, why? Yeah. Why does this give us an advantage? And I felt like you can look at the film and see all the motions and shifts and see the exact reason why it was done to get an elite Alabama defense thinking, yeah. which slows them down a step. And they're going to have to do that versus Washington. I, I, I always say about offense that 
that an offense needs to be simple with the illusion of complexity. And, and I oh, thought I that Michigan that. did a great job of, uh, it's simple. They're running their base plays, but it looks super complex when you're sitting on your couch at home. That's a, that, I'm going to have to steal that one from you. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to hear that. On a, of complexity? I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to hear that on a Jake Butt broadcast pretty soon. I know. Oh, I know. yeah, yeah, for sure. Jake, Jake, Jake the, the one other part of this game I, I, I forgot to mention is we're, we're all going to – everyone's talking about Penix, right? The game he just had, the Heisman, should he have won the Heisman. That He's the, the storyline of this game against Michigan. But let's not forget about J.J. McCarthy because he's going to have to make some plays in this game. And uh, we're talking about running the football. That's going to be important. But, uh, you know, he was up and down at Bama against times, but still was, I think, completed like 17 of 25, something like that. Yep. Um, yep. Three and, and touchdowns, was, no interceptions. Yeah, exactly. A couple big but, runs as well. He, he's there, There's going to be some moments for him to make some timely throws in this game against Washington. Uh, and he's going to have to step up and make them. And I trust that he will, man, because it's yeah. – the funny thing about that game is Jalen Milrow, the, the narrative was is Milrow was playing his best ball, whereas J.J. was playing his best ball earlier in the season. Yeah. And I think we know now that he certainly wasn't fully healthy those last few games. But uh, it's all the dude does is make plays. And it's yeah. it's impossible to doubt him. He's given us no reason. But we'll see two phenomenal football teams next Monday night. Both teams will be at their best. And then you and I will have another date here on the Button Brenneman Show, and we'll chop it up after the fact. So I am looking forward to that, brother. It's great to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. Appreciate it.